Oye es aguas. Gun mode coordination and mechanized support face off against him or team up with him rather it is uh, Zara. Also Soviets has armored assault gun rifle combined arms and mechanized support. Now facing off against them is Team of Crossfire Captain Spears. Okay, W Captain Spears has Luftwaffe Ground Forces, Special Operations and Fortifications. And Crossfire has Jaeger Infantry, Jaeger Armor, and Assault Support. So this was what AE and I described as the mystery match. We're not really sure what condition these two teams are. because <laughs> I haven't seen any practice from them in the lead up. Not to say they haven't been practicing, but maybe at times I haven't been around to observe. Maybe they're playing some custom games. Right. I don't think I've got E. I don't think I've got them on my uh, friends list, so I don't see them in friends games. I think I've got Crossfire on my friends though. Either way, should be a good game. Still find his take up a good position there behind the heavy cover. But now they're getting smashed by three squads of conscripts. That's a heavy conscript opening. This is very unusual. I don't think I've seen this from any other team so far in the tournament. Sometimes one player will go for conscripts, but. Definitely not two. I'd say more common is like one max and one penal. So this is a very unconventional start for the Soviets. But the advantage of this is of course you can get all those squads onto the battlefield early. And uh, can lead to some decent map presence if you can get uh, some good engagements early on. So it looks like... Oh. I see, I don't know where Crossfire's machine gun is. There it is. We have a fresh grenadier squad. These conscripts are looking for somewhere to engage. Looks like they're going to come for a long flank around the side. Wow. We're just going to go help in this engagement. It looks like that one's won anyway. Machine gun resetting up. Conscripts don't oorah. This. Stand strong to hope to get the uh, gunner model dead, maybe go into the death loop there, but didn't happen. Nice attempt at the flank, and if the gunner model had died there, it might have been successful too. Don't think they would have been able to steal it, but it would have been a nice delay. One of these grenadiers would have had to crew it, and then three back to base would have been in terms of map control. Ooh, flamethrower out here, a bit of danger. Gets away. And there we go, first Maxim for Zara now. It's going to second one, so three conscripts into double Maxims. It's just unlikely that he's got healing at least. Yes, it looks like Rutra is going for the healing. So they'll probably be sharing that for the meantime. So we've got Okidori pushing onto this fuel down here. Oh, tier 2 as well from Rutra, and he's also going into Maxims. Interesting. Rutra was a little bit behind in his build if that was his plan all along. Could have had his first maximum out by now. Got a battle group going up slightly forwards position here. Interesting position as well, because to come out to heal, you kind of have to come around this way. Not directly like out the front. It's a little bit of a detour. Off grenades. Oh, Maxim goes down there. Gonna get 
stolen by Captain Spears. Some came and try and stop the steal, but a little bit too late. And now, all of a sudden, you know, upon having to spend some time building those tech structures, a couple substandard engagements, and now the allies are right back against the wall. Making some good pushes though across the map. Got a mortar there for crossfire, going to work in the center. Oof. Let's hear the sandbags conscripts. Oh, you just, yeah, you got to get out of there, man. Let's just get in on the flank here. He's trying to hide from the second squad behind this tree line. Of course, the squad can't leave the heavy cover. If they do, they'll get suppressed instantly by the Maxim. They're pushing out well now, the Soviets. But they suffered quite a lot in that assault. Lost control of their fuel for quite some time. And now it looks like a couple of squads heading to the north. Try and return the favour. Look at all this wire getting, we are losing territory. getting this cover. Like turning it into uh, uselessness. And <laughs> he's putting down some sandbags to make up for all this lost cover. Conscripts pushing out well, double maxims as well on the assault. Tier 2 down for crossfire, but no light vehicles from it. Which is interesting. So that means the Axis is basically going for no light vehicles. It seems, because also Captain Spears no uh, flat car track for him which is a uh, very off meter again not getting a light vehicle especially when you've had like their fuel control up until now that they've lost both fuels they actually had very good fuel control which typically you capitalize on by going for fast light vehicle but not what we're seeing here from these two Guards now for Zara. He's gone for a mechanized support. The common 2v2 commander. Oh, second rifle grenade. Not quite deep enough though. Kind of targeted this area instead of like where the models were more centered. We'll flank on this Maxim. No overlocking Maxims. This one's in a bit of trouble here. This one's got the STGs. Pops the incendiary grenade too. Doing a lot of health damage. Oh, that's a stolen Maxim there going to work. I'll guess it in the ISG too. Okay, here's a 222. Very late though. I'm hitting the field to about 8 minutes 30. Usually you see these around 6 minutes 30. So not going to get full value out of that because T70 in production for Rutra. Gonna force away the 2 2 2. Oh, and this could be a wipe here. Yeah, Stern Pioneers go down. A little bit of overextension there. The enemy has taken our supply sector. 2 2 2 now getting zoned out by the guards as well. The enemy has cut off a sector. Double ISGs for Captain Spears. Should help against the Maxim play, but I mean, it's not even that many Maxims since that one got uh, turned over. Just two Maxims. Not too oppressive on a map of this size. Oh, that could be the end of the 2 2 2 right, right away. Button from one of the guards. Needs the second guard to get in there for some contributions, and there it goes. 2-2-2 goes down. That was some uh, very poor control from Crossfire. 
I suppose maybe he didn't know that this was there. But I thought he did. But the Axis have invested in a lot of indirect fire, mortars, ice geez. Oh my god! One, two, three. And the guards go down. coming in from crossfire the kitten for captain spears so they're going to be well in control of the anti-tank situation i've actually got a lot of value out of these conscripts even though these fox communities have now got stgs conscripts are remaining relevant just due to their very strong positional play on them really well. I'm not sure what that conscript score was up to, but there you go. Just seems it's close enough for Faust to connect. Got deep enough to put a... Uh, Tripwire there and uh, neutralize some munitions. I feel like you don't often see the neutralize on this munitions, you see it much more often on this one. I'm not sure why, like, they are in the same position of the map. I thought he put a tripwire down there. Oh, maybe it's like just on the edge? Yeah, okay, there it goes. <laughs> Guards close in. Don't know if they're inside. Oh, look at that rifle grenade over the hedge. Oh, and they have to retreat past that second squad of grenades. That's a white for sure. Ouch. Flame gets forced away there in the north. I'm just going to get around the side though here. Second squad of conscripts also going around the side. Machine gun. He's trying to set it up here. I don't think that's a good idea. Oh, another rifle grenade goes in. And another wipe. My god, these rifle grenades are going off. Good work from Crossfire. Getting in position now. T70 gets around the side. Guess he didn't have sight of it briefly. A fuel cache down for the allies. Shows their st strong position if they think they can afford to get a fuel cache. Rakitten misses the first shot, connects the wreck, and I think they might have been tacked ground on the second shot. That was way off target. Even got all the way onto the cutoff here. Thanks to that uh, machine gun getting forced away. So even though Zara has lost so many squads, he's lost what, two squads of guards, one squad of conscripts. He's still pushing super aggressively in a second fuel cache going down for Rutra. Wow. And they're definitely going to have enough fuel. Access themselves might want to think about putting a fuel cache down on this cutoff. It's been exposed a few times. Nice rifle grenade. Looks like he's staying in there, waiting for a second squad to come in with the rifle grenade, but he doesn't have the munitions quite. Maybe you can stay as pinned for 10 seconds before the damage ramps up. So use that to your advantage. If you uh, want your squad to stick around. To have that counter in your head. Ten, nine, eight. I'm taking the left. Back getting in position here. What's he doing? Oh, maybe he's trying to shoot at the cash. 
Oh my god, it's just connecting with all the cover instead though. Just missed T70 there, that might have been attack ground attempts. And it looks like maybe he's actually trying to destroy that heavy cover there. Got a big line of smoke there. This is from the ISGs. Holding strong in the middle. Because Crossfire's going for so many support weapons, though, it does seem like he's kind of one squad of infantry down. And that does sometimes leave the north exposed, doesn't have enough units to cover lone harassing squads. T34 on the field. Pack takes a nasty hit straight away. Second pack was uh, further down in the south, rotating up here now. Oh, now T-34 has a brief parthing hiccup. Looks like it's going to get away, but that's a close call. Second pack goes for an attack round shot, but I get through that hedgerow. Might get in range though for one shot here. No. Is this barrage to punish him? Pushing forwards like that. Wow, the ISGs connect with that. Sh Garrison do heaps of damage. Seems like there's been a lot of fighting in the south for the Axis, but they do sometimes leave the north a little bit neglected. So just like one lone capping squad from the allies can get a lot of territory up here. VPs though, you know, not too far drain for either team so far. They've both been paying attention to them for sure. They've been neglecting them. Focus on the... Uh oh! Oh! One squad down! Nasty close range Katusha barrage there. Double packs though! Uh oh! T-34 in a bit of trouble. Good control backs it away towards the shot blocker. And a second Katusha coming in on the packs now. And the machine gun. There's one for both uh, Rutra and Zara. Good teamwork as well. Like forcing retreat here and then kind of as the units reposition. Barraging where they reposition to. Some expert rocket artillery teamwork there. Oh my god, if that second pack shot had hit there, that was the end of the T70. And we got a panther for Captain Spears. Also got a straight tech to tier 4 for crossfire, which is why you haven't seen any tanks from him yet. But Brumbia is in production, has been so popular throughout this tournament. So Axis looking to turn things around now, they've finally got their tech complete. And feeling themselves some vehicles, but... As you can see, uh, the map control situation now is very, very poor. And the Panther, not very strong against infantry. He's kind of using it in a spot right now where, like, there are the most counters to it. A lot of mines, the Zis, and the T-34 down here. As well as a lot of conscripts with anti tank grenades. I mean, if he sent it to the north, he could force away these squads very easily. No anti tank grenades for Zara, which makes sense. He's only got one conscript, would be a little bit of a waste of resources. Oh, yep, there we go. 
Nice attempt at the attack ground there as well. So Boomba is being dispatched to the north though. Still quite a lot of mines actually as well. That's one thing that the allies have been very active in planting their mines. Means that any attempts for like a dive... Oh my god, that T-34 just connected for big damage. But the two packs are up there and the Boomba. That could be the end of the T-34. He wants to get the kill but it doesn't happen. Got incendiary artillery coming in. Didn't see that coming. Shock rifle frontline for Rutra. He has tech to tier 4 though, so it's not like he's skipping tech to go for the IS-2. G targeting this maxim behind the cover. This is a pretty strong ability, like really, against uh, double packs especially. Drop it on top of them. Just do a lot of damage. Oh. that time into the middle. T-85 zoning out the Bombier though. On focus sight. That long range vision. Oh, a double packs. Line up a shot. He's pulling them back. I'm not sure why. Rumba is staying in there, should have left the packs there. A little bit of a tug of war going on there as units try to reposition. Oh, we've got a Luftwaffe ground forces selected and Valiant Assault coming in here. Just sprinting forward with all these units. Well, that's going to be the end of that machine gun for sure. Oh, there goes that building, finally. Can attack ground over shock blockers. Just what he's trying here. Just missing. Ooh, a lot of mines, tripwires going off. Kind of put a stop to that valiant assault push. It did force Rutra right back. Munitions cash as well. So the allies have managed to put down three caches while still maintaining slightly superior map controls. Just how well they're playing here. Oh my god! Grandies just get monstered and could go down. Yes, the conscripts on the retreat path. Finish the job. Where's that second barrage? Okay, targeting the mortar team. Almost knocks it out. This one's got eight kills. This one's got five. I thought we would have seen no higher stats. I guess that the second barrages for both players were actually quite poor. Trap fielding the eyes two now. Should be pretty strong here in the south against the Panther. Also got Who's this in camouflage mode doing his best to imitate the Raketon here? Which is something you don't often see players use, even though it is in quite a few commanders. Got airborne assault called in. Remember, this does like some machine gun passes and then the anti tank passes. Nice two backs right out of the zone. Gonna stick around for those anti tank passes. So, yeah, he kind of feels like a little bit of waste of uh, munitions there. Does zone out the ice too. It actually gives it a little bit of experience there. Shoots down one of the planes. So, it looks like the Axis are on the front foot for the first time in a while. Starting to push. Valiant Assault Charge. Definitely got them a lot of territory. It's already five in a nice position there behind the building. So the packs can't target them. It 
Zara has now gone for two fresh squads of guards, making up for his early losses. Deep Barrage targeting this general vicinity. Oh, oh man! I didn't even notice, but it looks like S-85 took a Faust, almost went down to the double packs, but they got cleared out by the Katusha there. Double packs down, now all these tank guns rotating around quickly to try and destroy them before they can get recruit. Can he do it? He needs one more shot. Just before the pioneers get there, that is very unfortunate. Crossfire almost recruit them both there. Panthers on the scene. It's not to push in though. And this is, you know, the stage where that early heavy support weapon play from the Axis. You know, they got a lot of tank guns, a lot of uh, indirect fire pieces, can get punished by the rocket artillery. In this Panther, I feel like it hasn't really been up to much at all, it hasn't really found any angles on the IS-2 to try and slug it out yet. It hasn't done much damage to infantry, it really hasn't got much value from that panther so far. Heading up to the north, getting rid of that guard squad. Close range Katusha. Two takes engine damage here, but the double anti-tank guns have been zoning out the Panther. And he could lose this now, yeah, it goes down to all the machine gun fire. T-70 is still there, still relevant. Is the VET-3 now. A crazy line of sight went on recon mode. It's already had that for a while, but... Another Katusha Barrage. I'm targeting the HQ. We've got Werfer now for Crossfire, wants to level the playing field. Uh oh! Sandbags absorbed that shot. Oh, plane crash, was it? No, there was a bombing run. It looks like a bomb, bombing run. Machine gun team went down. Oh, I missed that. I have to admit. Panther in trouble here. Eyes two charging forwards. Pack. Oh, I'm not targeting the eyes two. And every shot penetrates. Oh, smoke comes in slightly too late. Pack rotates around now. Faust goes in, but Axis don't have the follow-up. They're using the bunk busting barrage, but still getting zoned out now. Fresh Panther on the field though. Those two could be in a little bit of trouble. Needs these infantry squads to try and zone out the anti-tank guns. Ooh, but then comes a nasty Katusha barrage! One squad goes down, they're continuing to chase, they just need two more hits I think, and the IS-2 is down, but double AT guns stand their ground. Panther can't chase any further, and the IS-2 gets away. Tense stuff, but really good Katusha play from the Allies so far. Every time the Axis make an assault. Kachushas are there to put it to rest. They've been really strong on their Kachusha play so far.
and they've also been using them basically as soon as they cool down every single time I've been left sitting idle for a while which can happen in these hectic matches Oof. now they've got the 152 on the field supported by the S85 and T70 on recon mode this is a nightmare scenario for the Axis so he's left it on our piercing switching over to high explosive now And that is the big boy as the counter. Crossfire selecting. Egg armor, sorry, I had to take a drink there. I'm going for the elephant. Upgrading some spotting scopes on the premier. There's the natural counter to the IC-152, the elephant. Oof. It's off to a good start. Doesn't have sight for any more shots. I didn't think he did have sight, but connects with the 152 there. Nice, you know, double LMG grenadiers. Nice too, just doing great work in the middle. Such a sturdy vehicle, you know. Whoa, IL-2 bombing run on the elephant. And now the S-35 pushing forwards. Yes, they had sight of that thanks to the uh, recon mode in the T70. Now they're pushing, they're pushing in. Kitten is there though. And Panther's coming back out. This could be the end of the uh, SU 85. Pulling in the incendiary rounds. Oh, he targets the uh, ISU. I think that's a slight mistake. If that first shot had gone on the SU 85, would have been the kill there. Now this could go down to the 152. Not no point. Nice twos in here to get a bit of follow up. Captain Spears is struggling in terms of supply. He has been losing quite a lot of his squads here in the south. God, Ice 2 takes a monster shot from the elephant. Risk it, risks uh, quite a lot there charging forwards. Oh, let's get a Faustin on the 152. Oh, Pack goes down. Well targeted, you know, that was shooting at the Ice 2 just before, so they knew its position. I don't know if I've heard the Werfer be relevant so far. Oh, he lost it. Did it die to that? Oh, how did he lose it? Oh, it's dead over here somehow. It's a mystery to me. Man, I haven't done, I've missed quite a few things so far in this game. I feel bad. My observing skills have let me down. Guards just coming around the flank. Should be able to win this engagement. Still does the grenade pretty effectively though. They're heading up that way now. It's one thing the allies don't really have is like very mobile medium tanks to deal with the rotation from the boom bear. So we can rotate to the north. Basically with impunity at this stage the allies have just invested in more rocket artillery. Well, the counter to the Axis planes. Mm, with the quad. Don't even need it when you got <laughs> the dish gun on top of you. 
tank though. My axes are struggling. The elephant's still not back up to full. Don't have uh, enough repairs, I suppose. They've gone for an IR searchlight, but this unit is actually banned in the tournament. It is bugged currently. It has been bugged for a long time. Dive bomb around this region. Nothing's going to be hit by it though. Oh, sandbag. Doesn't really count. Bit of a waste of munitions here. Typically, I think. You want to try to use these big off maps during like a real hectic engagement so your opponent doesn't really have time to think about dodging it. Maybe they have time to think about it, but not perfectly. Anyway, Elvin's back into a relevant position, but anti-tank guns are also creeping around, and without the Panzerwerfer, there's not really a good punish to this. And that T-70 is just providing crazy line of sight. Allowing these anti-tank guns to connect long range. Well, bounce long range. Kitten's about to go down here as well. Oh, that's crazy lucky. Juice into the middle. Machine gun low up here in the north has actually been doing some pretty good work. We are losing a sector. Something over here now. Doubles this barrage. This time he's too die bombing. Oh, and a direct hit on that time. Kind of did it slightly behind them as they backed into it. That was a well executed one. One of them gets recruit instantly. Here comes the Panther charging forwards. We're going to capitalize on that D crew. Uh oh, oh my god. Could this be the end? The bombing run coming in. He backs away upwards though. I think he's going to get away. Yeah, that's kind of targeting if he backed straight away. Good maneuvering of the elephant there to dodge upwards away from the bombing run. Oh my damn. That was super nasty. Four models down on those conscripts. If you just bring that Katusha into base. Allies continue to struggle for repairs. Fresh plans are worth for crossfire now as well. They didn't actually manage to destroy either of those Zis. I feel like if that was Zara and Rutra decrying those, they would have killed at least one of them. hasn't gone for the machine gun upgrade yet. Makes me wonder if he's trying to save from airborne assault. Chushify just rains in with three of them on the field for the allies. No, four of them now. I didn't even notice Zara's gone for a third Kachusha by himself. Oh my god, then. 152. It's a white. Now the Ice 2's in trouble. Looks like it took a couple of elephant shots. Panther chasing him for the kill. And he gets the kill. Nicely done. And oh my god, if he just continued chasing, he could have killed all of the Kachushas. Might have lost his Panther in the process, but it would have been worth it. He knew the position of at least one of them because it was barraging from right here just before. Right as he's making that charge. The Maxim doesn't quite get the kill, but that was a decent first barrage. Looks like that's just been left in the base because maybe his teammate told him, no, you can't build that. 
maybe accidentally build it. Maybe he's trying to make a. F no, it doesn't really make sense to make a flank half track. Because uh, you can't shoot down the R2 bombing room. What you can really shoot down is the Mark vehicle plane, but that's not really that important. 152 in position though, trying to knock out the battle group finally. It's one thing that Captain Spees doesn't have is stern pioneers now, so no repairs. In fact, the axes overall have so much armor, but so little in the way of repairs. It's a big problem for them. Two pioneers for crossfire, which is okay just for his army, but Captain Spears just has his repair HQ for two Panthers. Okay, they're calling in the planes here. Oh, but he hits a mine. Stops the chase. And is this actually in a really good position to return fire on this? Second Panther comes forwards, but you know, won't bother. Must be a Katusha on this region, right? Into the middle. Okay, yes. Okay, second Katusha was. So here's that one of the Rakitans. Panther's just taking free hits. All thanks to this recon on the T-70. He's just giving them so much sight. Riff for Barrage does some good damage there. 10 kills after 2 Barrage is not too bad. HQ finally gets destroyed by a Katusha Barrage there though. Oh, it didn't have munitions for a Faust even. And uh, I think this was on armor piercing, so it's not too strong against infantry right now. How surprising, the Brumby is still not up to Vet 3. On the field for a long time. Here it goes. Juicy hit in there. Yeah, the, the repairs for the Axis vehicles are slightly lacking. It is hurting their uh, strategies here. It's like both Panthers coming down to the south, but no mine sweeping, and there are a lot of mines here. This could backfire on them horribly. Yeah, that's one mine. One, two, three, four. Everything's connecting with these Panthers now. Could still get this IS-2 though. One more shot and I think it's dead. But he can't stick around for the killing blow. Elephant's there but so are the double Zis. These double Zis have been in such a good position throughout this match. All thanks to that T-70 recon. Oh, but they get... One of them gets knocked out by the Werf, at least. 18 kills. There was an 8 kill barrage there. Nicely done. Finally, this machine gun gets flanked this time. They're holding the ground, though, in the north very effectively. You get to see the impacts of... Captain Spears not having Stern Pioneers, not being able to sweep for his Panther, he ends up losing one because of it. And also because that uh, T-70s down here providing all that sight can spot those Panthers coming in for the push, reposition the anti-tank guns to the correct region and just punish those assaults as soon as, or before, before they even hit the mine. Already in position to do the damage. That's that TC Mini Recon. Oh my god! How do I miss this? How did that even get off? Isle 2 Boeing Run knocks out the elephant way in the back there. How? How did they even have sight? Was that all just from the T70? Couldn't have been. I didn't see it push that far forwards. 
That's a massive blow losing the elephant. We're starting to vet up as well, which might have been very helpful. That was incendiary artillery. Stop any anti tank guns from returning fire on this. into that region as well and knocks out the kitten. I feel like these Panthers for Captain Spears just haven't been relevant. Haven't done uh, much at all of this game. But either way, the VP game is very, very tight at this stage despite. Darren Rucha having about a 50 supply advantage. Let's just squeeze another S35 into the build as well. Looks like he squeezed into the build because that uh, decreases this actually. Often not on prioritized vehicles reveals its position there. Five two taking some damage. So the Axis gonna make a push here. King Tag hits the field, they're getting aggressive. King Tiger pushing forward, so is the elephant. Panther backing away though. In comes the smoke. And they're not gonna go in here. Mark vehicle comes forward on the uh, King Tiger. Meanwhile, conscripts in the back line here. There's some harassment. Perhaps the Axis worried about the conscripts in the back line coming in for some snares. Makes them think twice. Still not on prioritized vehicles with this shooting infantry. Some Volsham Jaeger coming in. And Elephant backed away there. If he stuck around and got a shot in, that would have been the end of the SU-85. Axis just in that state where they don't want to pull the trigger here, being quite cautious, but against the wall here, they need to make some big plays to get back in this game. But the sight advantage has really been on the side of the allies here. Oh, there we go. SU-85 hasn't been repaired. Just goes down. There was a VET-3 one as well. Had the pushing forwards now, but takes a monster shot on the 152. Oh, and the Katushas are raining in now. One white. This gets decrewed, though, by the Stuka dive bomb. Axis, machine gun in the same position, stops that push. Axis are in control of two of the VPs right now. We are down to 100 points. Nothing gets a good shot in. King Tiger's ready to make an assault. Looks like they're going to push on top of the 152 here. Axis. Holding strong in the center though, that conscript got forced away. Elephant and King Tiger charging forwards. Could this be the push they require? One Katusha goes down. IS-2 almost dead, one shot from death. This takes a so long range, you have to go with these kind of camera angles to catch it all. Now the VP is actually close to even thanks to that period of control in the middle for the Axis and the Bumbi is there as well. Security 5 pushing forwards. 
bounces their shot though. Oh, but man, that Brumbeer on VIT3 just crazy rate of fire knocks out. Machine gun foot can complete the cap, and that actually got abandoned. That's unfortunate for the Axis. T34 up here in the north. It's the machine guns up there still, perhaps, but it's not. Did end up retreating after forcing the way. Oh my god. If it finds an angle on the ice too as it rotates to the north. Looks like a T-34 going in. But it gets spotted early on. I don't think it's gonna get too much done here. Probably a slightly uh clumsy maneuvering here. Needs to get a shot in. No, the alpha misses anyway. This is coming right down to the wire here. Despite the axis, I feel like they've been right up against it throughout this match. They've been down on supply, but their VP control has been very strong. And their elephant. This this elephant has been much more effective than the first one. come the Katushas though. Pretty good job, like, dodging forwards. Although, targeting the repairing squads on the two tanks. No repairs for you today. Oh, elephant. Doing the damage and T70 now taking a shot. Doesn't want to lose that T70. If the elephant can get the killing blow here. Just gets out of the end time. See Daisy. 152. And E385 on a good angle here. He's got two E385s now. How do you repair this up? Is two on secure mode now. That's the desperation from the allies. Putting the IS2 on secure mode. People say it's a meme, but here it is in effect. A high level 2v2 match. Machine gun is powerless against it. Elephant heading up that way now. And he knocks out the T-34. He's got his eyes on the ice too now. Misses that shot. Meanwhile, the KT here. An immortal struggle. This is going right down to the wire. The Allies actually have invested so much armor. They don't have that many squads to cap. And that could be a problem as we enter this late game capping race. T-34 going in after the elephant, but oh, it takes a Faust, no chance. So it knocks it out, he's controlling this elephant really well, crossfire. The second elephant has just been a nightmare for the allies. This control of it has been excellent. It's going in for another T-34 assault. He really wants to knock out this low health elephant. This time I think he might be able to get around behind it, but doesn't matter, there's actually a fresh panther from Crossfire on the flank. Shuts it down really effectively. Now the Axis, I feel like, have got their slight edge. They're in control of two of the VPs right now. And uh, the armor is in position. Conscript heading to that northern VP. One in the middle as well. Umber we needs to mobilize. Was kind of spinning around doing nothing. Here comes the King Tiger. Umber chips in now as well. Ooh, there you go. 
285 zoning out that Panther with the mark target as well. Focus sight mode. Did he lose the uh, T70? No, T70 is still around. <clears throat> Not on uh, recon mode though. Axis popping smoke, trying to get the cap here. Get rid of that conscript in the north, but the damage has been done. The VP has been captured. Panther and IS2 duking it out. Up comes the S-85 on support. It's going to turn the tide. Axis secure the cap in the middle, but... Uh, Fail in the south, so the VPs are stalled right now. Got some massive artillery in the middle, but no infantry there at the moment. Randy is just trying to get the capture, and because they're taking the uh, IS-2 fire, now the Panther to get some free hits in, and here comes the elephant. Could this be the end? Oh, and the elephant connects long range. Excellent elephant play here from Crossfire. Now, also, the S-35 could be in trouble. Meanwhile, we've got the 152 making an aggressive push here. Supported by the double S-35s behind. Oh, Panther gets main gun destroyed. Skates out of there, though. Elephant rotating round. It's just a mad capping war in the middle. And it looks like the allies get control. It's both teams super low on VPs. T70 heading to the north, but the Panther's there. Oh, just gonna lose the green dead to the T70. Oh no, he doesn't react in time. Oh. <laughs> Okay, what can this elephant do? It's calling in the recon planes. Quad is still around though. Don't know how long the recon's gonna last. T70 is there and he's backed the panther away. Secure mode is working well. Takes it out, but it's gonna get the Faust. Either way though, that's really important for the Allies of rocket artillery. For both teams here. Trading blows, they try to stop each other from capturing this VP. And it looks like the allies are gonna hold on in the south. But the Axis are capping in the north and the middle now. Here comes the incendiary artillery, but there's a little bit of space on the edge there. Ooh, but maybe not, because then comes the Katusha. Either way, the VPs are stalled. So it's going right down the very last second and now you can see the Axis have taken the lead in terms of army supply it's been a long time since that's been the case but my god the elephant just took a monster shot so quick on the uh, marked vehicle on it connected with crazy damage now the elephant could go down Shush in the middle oh no he's gonna die well, maybe not it's 35 charging forwards though through the smoke, this could be risky. I think Elephant still needs two shots to die at that amount of health. Elephant connects with one. And now he's trying to pull back. But the Axis armor is very, very wounded. Can't contribute in the fight. That could be the end. Panther pushing forwards, but he's going to run head on into the SU 85s. Ideally, you want to come in from the side. So you don't take so much damage on the approach. And fresh eyes too here for Rutra. Oh, but either way, the elephant finds an angle. Even on super low health. Oh, a nice attack round through the building. Oh, but there it goes. Finally goes down to the SU-85. And uh, looks like that's probably going to be it there for the Axis. They lose the flak base as well to the WC-85s. They just don't have enough repairs. Don't have enough units to cap either. And one last heroic push in the south. 
it looks like most of the mines down here have actually been uh, run into so there's a bit of room for that panther to maneuver in the south there oh that could choose your brush Constrips just on a suicide mission, holding on to that VP in the middle. Oh my god, the Katusha and the incendiary artillery just wipe out the Volkswagen is there. It's actually something this is really good for, just dropping on a VP, stopping the cap. I didn't really think about that, but maybe that's their strategy all along. It looks like the Axis are calling GG. Really impressive play there for from Zara and Rucha. They just had such good control here in the south. And uh, they made really, really good use of that T-70 with the recon mode. It was just such a thorn in the side for the Axis for so long. I feel like the Axis maybe missed a beat by not going for a light vehicle. That, that rushed first Panther from Captain Spears didn't seem to contribute that much in, in the fight. But either way, very well played by both teams. On to game two. Victory is ours. Game two. Between uh, Crossfire and Captain Spears now as the allies. We've got a... Mixed allies team, crosswise the Brits has commandos, vanguard, and mobile assaults. Team up with them as Captain Spears, who has airborne, rifle company, and infantry company. I haven't seen that much of this team throughout this tournament so far because I think the core reason is because the Katusha is currently the best piece of allied rocket artillery and rocket artillery seems to be very very important in these 2v2 matches as we saw like the allies got four of them last game so we'll have to see how they get on no uh calliope even for captain spears has access to the infantry company which we'll probably see do have access to the land mattress as well for crossfire but not quite the same Anyway, Zara, as they all say, has a Lightning War, Yeager yeah, Armour, and Blitzkrieg. Pretty common loadout, and Rutra. There's Breakthrough, Fortifications, and Special Operations. There's OKW. Okay, machine Gun in the middle. Nice suppression. Can switch targets now with the squad over the rear echelon. Should do. Okay, might actually lose the rear echelon now because he's so late in switching targets. Either way, it looks like both teams kind of content to try and capture their side of the map. Tommy's actually doing a lot of damage to the Kubel there. I'm surprised he went for a Kubel, honestly. I feel like Kubel's like good on uh, the larger maps. Vo farmlands and the like, but oh, so it's, good. it's kind of like a medium sized 2v2 map. So, Pioneers took a lot of damage closing in there, kind of surprising. Gonna lose that engagement because of it. Now, the Allies getting a little bit aggressive, looking to harass the north. Kubel hasn't been up to much in the south, and we've got a uh, very aggressive push here. Going right towards the cutoff. Similar maneuver from the Axis, though. Nice position there, like a nice tank trap position there on the cutoff. Alright, some nice cover. In fact, that's a full encirclement. Opportunity. He's got to get out of there ASAP. Probably lose too many models. Hey, 
These squads seem to be taking a decent chunk of damage. Don't know if all of them are in heavy cover at that range. Oh, Kugel goes down. Mass Tommy fire. So yeah, as I thought, Kugel not a terribly strong option on this map. Pioneers in the north trying to harass these riflemen. Axis once more going for the cutoff. Very successful before. Allies getting deep, deep. Going for the munitions point right at the base. But because they have got onto this cutoff twice, there's going to be a slight edge in terms of fuel for the Axis early. Which uh, could lead to a slight edge in their light vehicle speed. So we've got a four Grenadier build from Zara. Meanwhile, there were three fortunities after losing that one Kugel. A little bit late getting his tier two up. Pioneer's re retreating now, though. So, will we see a Flamer half track? We didn't see it last game, but has been very popular throughout this tournament. Very, very strong anti infantry firepower. No, looks like he's actually going for a mid bunker first and foremost. Putting it in the middle between these two. Because of course they'll be sharing it. Rutra having gone for mechanized HQ. Wow. Captain Spear's gone for rifle company. He's got a flamethrower on these rear echelon here. Flushes that unit out of the building. Does have a wire there though. Can't hop in. Barely ever see this building used, but here we go. Cover to cover fight. She got in a really nice position here. And that push largely halted. Oh, and he could lose the squad. Slightly late retreat. from the side there looks like Captain Spears was on top of it but nice attempt now it looks like Crossfire gonna get into the mix because Captain Spears as you can see from his command point clock has just been <laughs> taking all the engagements so far whereas Crossfire hasn't really got his hands dirty yet actually going for an AT gun straight away not going for the AEC, which is a little bit surprising. It's floating a lot of resources too. Maybe he's going to go for a, like a fast centaur. Could be an option. Anti-tank gun, ready to do some damage. Centaur, though, not as popular as it used to be since the. Um, I don't know what it's called, but it's, it's line fire ability. Got nerfed. Moment of calm here. Just secures <laughs> the salvage there. Rifle squad gets a nice position coming around the side, and those green is going to get forced away here. In fact, that's a big assault coming in from Captain Spears. Vickers gets out positioned as well, and he's going to get onto that cutoff once more. He just finds a way onto the cutoff, and crossfire, look how much she's floating here. Kind of crazy. Put a cash down on this. Uh, 
Oh, he's got the STGs, can fight much more effectively against the Tommy's long range. Flamer v Flamer Warp, but this one was suppressed. Yeah, and they have to backpedal away now. Hold the line still. Here comes the Vickers. Oh, that was, yeah. <laughs> that was unfortunate time he left to try to get the capture, but... As soon as he left cover, he saw the Vickers had set up just outside of sight range. Really nice range to set it up there. And retreated instantly. He knew the jig was up. Now Axe is pushing forwards and with this flamethrower forcing all these units out of cover, making it really tricky. Captain Spears looks like he's going to get the captain around the backside though. And with its... Uh, Submachine gun could do some good damage, but maybe not. Maybe he is. Maybe he thought the machine gun would be facing this way. He kind of back, backed away, but ends up facing towards this rifleman. He's now gone for a pack out, sir. Still, looks like no light vehicles from either of the allies. So kind of repeating what they did as the Axis. Similar to Zara and Rutra also not going for any light vehicles, despite... Having gone for mechanized HQ. Has been set. The static post is now in operation. So maybe Rutra's strategy is like, I'll get the mechanized HQ just in case they get a light vehicle, I can get a Puma to counter it. But if not, I'm going to go for a fast tier 4 myself. To get a fuel cache down here. Was crossfire despite floating 1,000 manpower Orders are ready to be issued for a raiding operation. hasn't put down a cache himself. I think that's a missed opportunity. Army commander is ready to Looks go. like he was waiting for three command points to call in some commandos, but definitely they could have got a cache down, preferably on this cutoff. He's holding their ground behind that heavy cover. Is he? Oh man, what is going on? Okay. <laughs> Camera's under control now, boys. Never fear. But that's a big force for Zara over there. Captain Spears thought he could find an angle through, but unfortunately not. Is having a little bit of trouble with his pack out, so he hasn't got any damage in so far despite trying to fire on all these squads in the north. Just managed to squeeze a squad onto the fuel point itself. Could be quite a treacherous retreat path though, he's got a lot of units to retreat past. Looks like AT guns actually going deep in enemy territory, finds a bunker and knocks it out. So Crossfire getting his hands a little bit dirtier, because look at him, he's still at three command points, whereas the Axis right the way around at six. Mobus managed to get in there, decrew the anti tank gun, but commanders are there on a retreat path. He goes for a retreat path grenade. One more from each. Can't get the wipe as a result. Machine gun though gets slightly unmaneuvered. Does have a blind spot from this angle. Gonna have to retreat. Get some healing at the very least. Very late getting out of the building there. Doesn't have full healing on all his Tommies either. Runners have actually been pretty good with the uh, positioning so far. Okay, he just back pedals to the uh, forward glider there. Remember, these gliders are not a forward retreat point, but they can do forward reinforcement. It's 
machine gun. Feels like it's in a tricky spot. Looks like he's going to backpedal expecting a flank from the captain, which is probably going to pan out pretty well for him. There is a major coming up though, so it could drop some major artillery. Oh, unfortunate time to pack up the machine gun. And why is he backpedaling? Should try and stay in the heavy cover. Managed just to get suppressed as a result. So now looking to contribute. That's actually two machine guns for Zara. I've created over the house. Often they actually collide with the house. Who's lucky to get that one off? And now we've got a some base health to fire. Some white phosphorus as well. Just move forward though out of the white phosphorus. Gonna have to retreat back through it though, I think. White phosphorus can't kill, but will mean that these squads are gonna take a really long time to heal up in base. Due to their low health. Let's put a large tax on healing and looks like they're still only sharing one bunker for healing. So that is relevant. The enemy is taking our territory. So this has definitely been a pretty back and forth game, but no one side has experienced any real casualties. I think that's largely because no light vehicles. It's kind of been like a fast tick, no rush kind of game <laughs> for both sides. But things could be about to accelerate really quickly because we're about to see some arm hit the field boom beer in production. Easy 8 nearly complete. Crossfire meanwhile, I'm not sure what he's up to. He's ticked all the way to Hammer. Looks like he's going to go for a Comet. I think we've seen uh, other teams. I think Proji and Price, they've been going for Anvil, going for the uh, Churchill, just using it as a meat shield. So we'll have to see how Hammer gets on. I really think Hammer's, like, it's pretty good, but the, the Comet is just a little bit substandard at the moment. Quite worth its uh, cost. Panzer IV on the field for Rutra. That's a good damage here. Into tank gun missed though, so it doesn't end up getting engine damage on it. Easy 8 hidden the field. Very similar timing to the Bumbia though. It was actually pretty good against the Bumbia though. It's got the extra penetration. Really helps against the Bumbia's tough armor. And it's uh, also very mobile. White Phosphorus goes in. Also retreat on the machine gun. Easy 8 doing some damage in the north. Remember it did die. Uh, I believe it got its moving scatter nerfed at some stage. Which is kind of a nerf against its anti infantry firepower. Here we go, connects with a nice shot. Brumbia returns fire. Packs in a nice position though. Still gets one more shot on easy 8. There's good damage there. Looks like packouts are targeting this area with all these support weapons. Meanwhile, Panzer fought in the south. Uncontested because Comet is now in production, but a little bit late. Oh, this could be nasty. Miners are quite trumped up here. No, not too bad. Six pounder actually facing the wrong direction here to return fire. But uh, allies are losing ground here. He did actually go for a fuel cache, but very, very late. I didn't really notice when that was when these came up, but. You know, he was floating thousand for so long. Could have got those caches up way earlier. M1 returning fire. He's got double M1. Captain Spears has a pretty large army, whereas Crossfire Our capture point. That's right, invested uh, a little bit more into tech. 
His armor's a bit lacking right now. You now have a new comet tank. We have 300 points remaining. And uh, the Axis, as you can see on the tactical map, just charging forwards right across the map. And there comes the walking Stuka, targeting the pack outer. And as I mentioned, no uh, rock artillery for the Allies that could cause headaches against this team weapon play on the Axis. Looks like the AT gun's gonna go down here as well. I'm heading down there now, but we've lost an anti-tank gun. Oh, it <laughs> does a bit of friendly fire on the decrude AT gun. Whoopsie daisy. But right across the map now, the Allies struggling to hold on to territory. It's one thing that the Comet's actually pretty good against though is the OKW Panzer IV. So we just have that going for him currently. You know, Ritra will be able to go for some Rakittens. He's going all the way to base here, looks like, trying to get the white. But the Comet's just not quite good enough at the anti-infantry duties. It's insane. It's insane. Yeah, not really worth its cost at the moment, I feel. Anti-tank, quite not good at... You know, similar price to the Panther, but loses an anti tank and its anti infantry doesn't really make up for it. Oh, he, did he get a crush there? Oh, he hits the mine though this time, and his rear armor is exposed to the Panzer IV. This is the problem. Panzer IV pushing forwards. If this was front on, the Comet could fight him, but. Facing this direction, I think it's going to go horribly wrong. Yeah, there it goes. Comet goes down. The enemy have knocked out a comet tank. The T guns were moving up a little bit too late. Once again, mines come back to bite. Crossfire. I think it actually was Captain Spears last game, but <laughs> we won't let that get in the way of a good story. Yeah, he just has a squad on the other side of the hedgerow waiting for those rifle grenades. Really nasty trick on this map. The white. And now we've got some brands though. Crossfire is still floating a lot of manpower. Doesn't feel like he can spare the fuel for the five man upgrade, however. Oh, nice bundle grenade. Just a blind shot. Expecting the commanders to be there, I guess. A major recon pass coming in there for Captain Spears. Get in the lay of the land. Busty barrage, long range here, try and take this AT gun. Second easy eight coming in for Captain Spears. Maybe he should consider trying to send his uh, easy eight to the south because at the moment he's getting zoned out by this double pack in the north, but in the south there's no H tank guns here. And Panzer IV could be a nice target for the easy eight. Zara though, just so much damage gets the wipe there. The Brumbia having a field day. Nearly bit two already. And man, I, the allies just don't know which way to go. There's so much territory down here in the south they could take easily, but it looks like they're trying to uh, find the north. Ace targeted! Oh my god, that was disgusting. 
base targeted walking Stuka knocks out so much. Okay, he's got the easy eight here. Into tank guns coming around the side. Oh, bounce with the AT gun. That might have been the killing blow as well. And no follow up. Doesn't charge him with the easy eight either to try and secure the kill. Thing is, when you when you go for this kind of play, with like easy eights and uh, comets, it kind of does incentivize you to try and go for those more aggressive pushes. Because otherwise, just picking shots at long range, it's not what those medium tanks are best at. It's like, oh, it looks like they're just going to pull GG. And surrender. We knew the jig was up. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't really see the reason for the strategy. Crossfire, especially, just is flowing so much manpower. If you're going to go for this kind of strategy, you need to get those caches up way earlier. Just way earlier. It was really bad from him. And I'm not really sure about these commander selections here, honestly. Just rocket artillery, such a factor in these team games. Not having it available, massive obstacle for the allies. Anyway, I'll wrap on that. Guys, if you like your game to be cast by me, details in the video description below. Otherwise, I'll catch you all for the next thrilling installment. Goodbye, and good luck.